Another one is an open source project, project that Richard and I have been uh, developing to make it easy for uh, data scientists and data engineers um, to run any Python code uh, on the cloud without much hassle. So why did we come up with this uh, idea? Well, because we think that developing um, locally is, is convenient, right? You have everything sort of at your fingertips. It's fast. There's lots of flexib flexibility, but it can be limiting, right? If you need to, to run a job on bigger data or you need maybe some big GPUs, or maybe you just don't want to run a long uh, batch job or training job or whatever on your local machine just so you can do something else then you're kind of in a bind there locally. But the cloud, on the other hand, has lots of capacity to run these kinds of things, but it's kind of annoying to access. Um, there's, first of all, there's an embarrassment of choices. Do you use virtual machines? Do you use like uh, Kubernetes clusters? Do you use lambdas? Do you, oh, there's all these kind of uh, options that you have. Um, and even if you do make a choice, then there's the infrastructure that you still need to set up. It's much better than running a data center, of course, but still there's many API calls or Terraform scripts or whatever it is that you want to use uh, to set up the infrastructure. And even then you, you still don't have like the local code and your local uh, Python environment, Conda or PIP or whatever it is that you use um, available on those machines. Maybe you need to go build containers or, or stuff like that. Um, and so what Run does is it's an open source tool that is, that automates all these uh, aspects of running your Python code base on the cloud. So it's it's geared specifically towards Python. Um, and um, this talk will mostly discuss the, uh, well, the AWS uh, target, but we also do support Azure and uh, Kubernetes. The idea is this is not a service, it's a tool, it's a, it's a library that you can just pip install. Um, so you bring your Python code base, um, you, uh, you give uh, Matterone access to the, your AWS account, and Matterone kind of does the rest. Um, and so I'll show you what that looks like um, in this demo here. So here we have a, if you look on the left here in the, uh, in the kind of, I hope that's visible, can make it a bit bigger. Um, where we have kind of a, a small uh, Python code base. Um, the idea is there are uh, multiple Python files here. So this is just meant to, the, the code base itself can certainly be much bigger. The, the only thing what we're intending to show here is that you can, it's, it, this is not limited to just running one script or one Jupyter notebook. It's like, we it, it really target um, larger Python code bases with um, a whole bunch of um, like third party dependencies that you can have as well. Here, um, I've been using Conda, but we also do support uh, virtual lamps and uh, poetry. Um, and so just to give a quick walkthrough what this fairly simple code base does, it just calls this classify score function, which is in this file here, uh, which trains a K nearest uh, neighbor, neighbors classifier, um, which Casper just talked about, uh, and then um, splits a training set, uh, a, a data set in, that it loads from scikit-learn, uh, which is a third-party dependency here of this uh, uh, of this code base, and does some predict and returns some uh, training and test scores. So what it does is not very important, but we can run it and see that it works. Because um, I have my Gonda environment here, uh, and it, it outputs some data. Now, suppose we uh, <clears throat> want to run this um, run this classify score function with all its dependencies on uh, on an uh, AWS virtual machine, then we can use MetaRun to do that pretty easily. So let me just close this. Uh, what you need to do um, to get MetaRun to work is, as I said, just pip install it and give it access to your AWS account. And then you write this in Python, you write this sort of uh, specification or uh, uh, function uh, you call it run function to um, to to tell matter run what you want to run and where you want to run it. <clears throat> so I'm just going to get this started because it can take a bit of time for the um, virtual machine on AWS to boot up. And I'll, I'll show you the output later while I explain um, what what this is uh, saying. So what do we need to tell matter run? We need to, well, we need to tell it which Python function to run, which here is classify score as we did in the other main. We also need to tell it what kind of compute we want to target. Um, here we're saying we want an AWS virtual machine, which is called EC2, if you're not familiar. 
uh, and then we tell um, what kind of compute resources we need uh, on the remote machine. So um, AWS itself uh, or EC2 has a whole wide range of virtual machines available, and they all have complicated code names like G5, Xlarge, and then there's a whole list that you then have to go figure out to uh, to see, you know, does this have, how many CPUs does this thing have? How much memory does this thing have? So uh, Matterrun abstracts this all away from you and just allows you to say, okay, I want this many CPUs, I want this memory, uh, this much memory. You can also specify GPUs and GPU memory. <laughs> And then this um, maybe somewhat mysterious parameter here uh, allows you to access so-called spot instances. Spot instances are um, virtual machines that AWS makes available to you at a cheaper price for a kind of excess capacity. Um, the downside is that they can be interrupted. And they give you an estimate of how high that interruption chance is. And this is sort of the maximum interruption chance that you will uh, be able to tolerate. If you set this to zero, you will get a so-called on-demand instance, instance, which will not be um, interrupted. And finally, what you need to tell Matterrun is uh, what you want the remote kind of deployment to look like. Uh, and here we're saying, well, I just want to mirror my local environment. And what Matterrun will do then is look, um, look at the environment in which this function is running, which in this case will be a conda environment, figure out what's in it, replicate that on the remote side and also figure out what the local code is that it needs and also send that to the remote side. So hopefully by now it's done that. Oh, it has not. <laughs> That's unfortunate and the demo effect, of course. Let me try that again. And if I run out of time, then uh, I will have to interrupt it. Um, so what it's saying here now, it's, um, as I said, it's mirroring the current um, environment. It's detected that it's running into a Conda environment. Um, it's figured out that there's no existing instance running in my account at the moment, uh, in, in which case it will try to launch a new instance. Um, it does keep instances around for a bit, for virtual machines around for a bit in case you kind of run um, new machines, uh, new jobs on existing machines. So I think it's now actually uh, managed to start it. Yeah. So it's launched a new instance for the job. Um, it tells you what kind of instance it is, a T2 medium. It has two CPUs and four gigabytes. It tells you what it's going to cost and what the eviction rate chance is. And then it runs the worker on it. Um, <clears throat> As you can see here, it's then pulling a Docker image. You might wonder, where is this Docker image coming from? Well, I, I ran this job before, um, and because because it takes a long time to build a Docker image, it can take like, especially with Conda, it can take four or five minutes. So to speed up the demo, um, uh, I, I built a Docker image first, and then Matterwin automatically caches this. And if there are no changes in your Conda environment, then it will just reuse that Docker image. So it just now needs to pull it to the to the virtual machine to then run uh, the function into it. Uh, I think I'll let it do that and then just uh, continue with uh, and come back to it afterwards so to save some time. Um, so I showed you a run function. Um, there is also some other uh, uh, API commands that you can call from MetaRun. One is run command, so you can run a shell command in an environment. And there's also a, a run map which is basically like a parallel map that can run a single function, but on a list of arguments. And, and it will allocate many machines and then run, those, uh, run that function on those uh, in parallel. Oops, sorry, did not meant to do that. Um, so as I said, we uh, target AWS. We also target Azure, so you can also start Azure VMs. We also target Kubernetes and Google Kubernetes Engine. Uh, here's some more info on that. The, the main website is meadowrun.io. Um, give us a star or follow us on Twitter, and I'll, I'll be available on the, uh, on the Discord as well if you have any questions. Let's see. Oh, yeah. It has actually finished, so at least I, I, I can prove that it works. <laughs> so here's the, uh, the output from the, uh, from the remote run.